Welcome back to The Urban Monk, Dr. Pedram Shojai in studio with a couple new friends. Got a very interesting story for you coming. It's a love story uh, and it's been a rocky road uh, and mm -hmm. on one side of it was heroin addiction and uh, some real trouble and on the other side was uh, a, an amazing couple that's sitting in front of me here mm -hmm. uh, and the enzyme in between happened to be a very special plant. Uh, that we're going to talk about. So I want to uh, welcome Elizabeth Bast and Shore Boogie to the studio. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Pedro. It's great to be here. Great to have you Thank both. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So you are um, tattooed up with all <laughs> kinds of very interesting symbolism. Yes. And you're an artist. Yes, I am. Uh, who ran into trouble with heroin. Yes. Yes. Um, in my younger years, in my youth, I did uh, had some extracurricular activities uh, known as uh, street pharmaceuticals, and um, I did that from like say like the age of thirteen up to the age of twenty two, and um, you know jails, institutions, and death, and all that stuff. And from there, you know, I basically decided, made a conscious decision to straighten my life out. You know, or was either die, and that was at the age of 22, and stayed clean for about a good 13 years. And during that 13 years, I was like um, building up my career, my art career, doing things, traveling the world, making money and stuff, and working really hard. Working really hard, you know, I was making that sacrifice, and maybe so maybe too hard. From, maybe too hard. Maybe. Too hard, definitely. And then from there, uh, you know, I'm like getting involved in like circles like, uh, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, why, why am I here? Like in these circles, you know? Who are like, these people? These, you know, these are some people that are like, you know, I call them demons. Demons? Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. Oh, yeah. So um, from there, but I'm not placing blame on them because I make my own choices. And from there, you know, I, I don't say I, I fucked up or messed up. I basically went back in a lesson, you know. So when I went back in a lesson, you know, the, it started off with, you know, some alcohol. And then casually the heroin started coming back in. Mm -hmm. And that was for about a good, you know, three to five years. You guys were together at the time. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you're seeing this start to happen. <clears throat> yeah, he was sober when I met him, and uh -huh. not only sober, but militantly sober. Sure. Right. And then over the course of our relationship, it, it was alcohol was reintroduced. Yeah. Severe overworking, incredible hours. Like, and it's beautiful because he loves what he does. He's very passionate about it. But I saw a kind of burning the candle at both ends. And a lot of parties, a lot of... She definitely <clears throat> noticed a change. I mm. definitely <laughs> noticed a change, the reintroduction of cigarettes, and then uh, a few recreational drugs that I learned about later on you know, work trips at the very end, and then finally the heroin relapse. Yeah. And this is, we're six years in. You know, he's not disposable to me. Um, so... You love him. Yes. You love her. Yes. And you also love heroin. <laughs> I did. So now what? I did. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, yeah so yeah, at yeah. this point. He, um, he confessed to me. And, I and did. There was, a, there was a, a heartful confession. And there was a 24 hour period I was just in shock. And then I started looking online like, what can we do? We need treatment. We need something. And I told him, if we're going to stay together, there needs to be some treatment now. Like, really powerful treatment. And then and looking I was online. debating too. Yeah. Really? I could feel <laughs> there were moments mm -hmm. you could have slipped away. You know, it was, oh, yeah. it was very mm -hmm. close and very messy and sometimes. So I started researching online and found out that 90% of serious opiate addicts relapse in the first year in our current models of treatment. And I was devastated. And I'm sure a lot of those people, too, are dealing with pharmaceutical drug replacement therapy and even methadone or suboxone, which are more toxic than heroin. Had you tried those on your first go around? 
Uh, like you, what, Suboxone and Methadone, methadone. all those? I, Did I, you I go tried to some Methadone my first, like when I was younger, I've done that, uh, just like a little bit, but I was like, nah, it's not for me, I'd rather do heroin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah that's sure. how it was. Okay, so, mm. so obviously the conventional treatment model sucks. Mm -hmm. What'd you find? Yeah, so I went into nature and I took a walk. I just wanted to clear my head, this was that first day. And uh, I had had some experience with other medicines, so I was aware of plant medicines and aware of how powerful they could be as, as healing agents. And walking in nature, I don't know how I remembered iboga. It almost felt like iboga was remembering me. So it was lodged in there in my consciousness, bubbling to the surface. And for the life of me, in that moment, I'm like, how do I know that iboga is good for addiction? And in retrospect, it was probably a Daniel Pinchbeck book that I had read many, many years before, but I was unaware of where it was. And so that was unique uh, of a remembering experience. So what's iboga? So iboga mm. is a <laughs> sacred visionary plant medicine that is used by the indigenous people of Central West Africa and primarily Go the Bwiti. The, the Bwiti tradition, which is a study of life. And they don't use it to treat addiction traditionally, and they use it to heal all kinds of things, but primarily it's used for initiation, for young people coming into adulthood to face the challenges that they do in tribal life, in nature, um, and it's to wake up. Yeah, it's it, one of the foundations of the Bwiti culture. For sure. um, absolutely. Yeah. Extremely psychoactive. <laughs> extremely psychoactive. It's an extremely powerful medicine. They say medicine. it's reality. <laughs> They'll claim yeah. it's reality versus calling it a psychoactive or a psychedelic. Sure. Yeah. So you're coming home. Yeah. You're coming home. You're waking up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well said. Definitely. Well, well, well you're said. Home. Yeah, it's a very it's long, true. longer and so, lasting. And sometimes coming home hurts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. it's like, uh, like Mugenda, the shaman that we worked with, says the truth hurts, but it sets you free. We, exactly. We've all heard that and it's it's so true so there's a shaman in Africa who's yeah. administering this yeah. how did you yeah. find how did you connect the dots so there's okay. a thing called Iboga you live in yeah. the United States uh -huh. it's not legal here not at all no it's a schedule no. one substance right Which so is crazy so I ran yeah. home before because well, really it works That's what, oh yeah. it, it I've never <laughs> seen yeah. anything mm. like it in all of my life mm -hmm. so before I told him about it, I went home to do research. Mm. And then when I did research, I found so many different things. Everything from, uh, it's a magic bullet, which is reducing it, and it's way oversimplifying it. There's a whole, many factors that help to hold the medicine in a good way. So everything from it's a magic bullet to it's a complete gamble, deadly uh, crapshoot. That but people don't come back. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. I've heard these statistics mm -hmm. like one sure. in 800 dies and, and so on and so forth. But we're learning things all the time that the medicine isn't inherently deadly. There does need to be medical screening. There are some contraindicated medical conditions and definitely contraindicated pharmaceutical drugs that someone would need to safely wean off before they approach the medicine. So not everyone is a candidate, but with good screening, um, we're learning how to make it more safe what all is the it? time. What is it exactly? It's a root. It's a root? It's yeah, a root. it's a root yeah, bark. A, well, it's a root bark, mm -hmm. yeah, but it, yeah, it's, you shave it straight off the root from a plant in Africa that grows a little orange fruit on it. They're kind of claiming it that it's, uh, you know, the, the tree of life. The fruit of knowledge. The fruit of knowledge. Like that's, what, that's what the local yeah. tribe calls it? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Th that's how in they regard it. In relation to what people think, and they I, know what's in the Bible. I think mm. there's yeah. many sure. yeah. sacred substances that could be that. And for me, that's definitely my, what it was Wonder. for me. Is it considered an entheogen? Is it in that Absolutely. class? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's like ayahuasca is a master plant. It's a very powerful entheogen. And I like that word a lot. Mm. Um, and it is... Some say iboga in ceremonial doses is even more powerful and rigorous, and that was my experience. It all depends on the dose and the situation and the context, but it, it was the longest experience, at least between 24 and 48 <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, that two, is a two, long three days. time. And yeah. the, uh, our, did you feel like you were dying? In a good way. I felt many. <laughs> I felt many things. Many. 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 Took four hundred pages. Levels. Too. Many dimensions. <laughs> this is, this the, is the full download. <laughs> that's the full. That's, the full that's an, download. That's, that's an aspect of it. Yeah, definitely. What I hear about iboga is that it is a, a like a father, not a mother drug. Mm. Like it's got a masculine energy, and it's kind of like you know got got a backhand. Whereas you know like ayahuasca, some of the, some of the, like even psilocybin, some of the like kind of earth mom energy drugs are still embracing. Like you feel like you're held. Like yeah. iboga will kind of kick your ass in a little. <laughs> Yeah, and so can Tell I. Tell the truth. I, I, yeah. I can do that as well. They'll teach you a lesson, definitely, yeah. for sure. Well, mom and dad do it differently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well, my wife cut, cuddles my kids when they're being horrible, and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how, exactly. through our human lenses, that's how we can interpret the energies mm -hmm. of these plants, which are beyond gender. But I, I would say so from my human lens, it was much more masculine, but the Bwiti people actually say that it is a dual spirit mm -hmm. in one plant because oh, yeah. it can be both um, stern, very stern, but beautifully stern. It's, it's the real magic mirror mm. of looking into your own soul and your own truth and, and very loving and kind and wonderful and opulent and beautiful. But my first journey was so rigorous I almost didn't want to do the medicine again. <laughs> we had two journeys planned for our first eight-day retreat uh, with the African shaman in Costa Rica, and I had purged more than I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. You would have thought she was detoxing off drugs versus yeah. me. And I mm -hmm. was, yeah. because I could feel that I was detoxing from all of the vi biochemicals that are produced from habitual, negative, fearful thought patterns. I could feel it being sucked right out of my body, and I was doing a lot of that, I realized. Did you feel that that was what was happening during? Absolutely. I could feel that's what was happening during, and it mm. had the same effect on my brain. I felt like my brain was purging, mm. that it was excavating my whole conscious, semi-conscious and subconscious mind to bring up every fear and attachment to the surface to face and release. And so in that moment, because this is where people feel like they're dying, and they're not dying, they're just facing stuff that's uncomfortable. Yeah. How does one, I mean, is it, is it a conscious process? It's like, okay, this shit is coming up, now mm -hmm. I gotta deal with it? Is yeah. Like, and then unless you deal with it, it stays there? Was so it, it just a, stays kind of in front of you until you're clear? Or what? Actually, just, it's, it's, a, it's a point of facing all those fears. You know what I mean? And once, once you're able to face them, you can let them go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So literally, you're, yeah. Look, you're following yourself. You're looking at yourself face to face. Your spirit is coming to you. You're going to your spirit. And you are either going to make amends or you're not. I so what happens if you don't? Uh, then it's not a good idea. I mean, it's not going to be good for you. Okay, yeah. so what does this look like? Okay, if you guys are on Iboga right now and uh -huh. I walk into a room, are you like on the floor in a puddle of vomit? Like, how, ah. like what does it look like? <laughs> well, before, right? like, just, just to no. respond, um, you, you asked a great question. And I found it to be very participatory and very mm. interactive. Very yeah. sentient. Very conscious. It's, a, it's like Star Wars is it in is. here. It is. Star Wars isn't out there. Star Wars is in here. Darth Vader is in here. Yeah. Mm. And, and um, fun and exciting and humbling and I did see a lot of incredibly terrifying things about myself and it was beautiful to interact with that and make a decision to let it go. Okay. So, so what does it look like? <laughs> yeah, no, okay, so, so I, I just want to stay on this because what it looks like is, is kind of trivial compared to where you're at right now is once you've seen that mm -hmm. and once you've faced that yeah. on the other side of that, you remember that, it's not like that goes away what is your relationship with that like on the other side, right? Like mm -hmm. On the other side of, of like coming out of the medicine. Okay, coming out of the medicine. Well, no, I mean that's not so much wanna, the medicine. Okay, so you so you, you, hear you faced a lot of your shit. Right? I did. Oh yeah. Right? To the oh, point yeah. where you came out and said, "I don't need heroin anymore." Oh. Of course. You faced yeah. stuff Within you didn't plan hours. on facing. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I didn't want to put anything bad in my body ever again. Four words. After that. Four yeah. words the next day. So what I what I saw. Okay. What I saw was I could recognize him again the next day. He had been so polluted. 
I can recognize yeah. the man I fell in love with. It's like a and total four, different person. Like that demon was showing himself. When you ingest or take, you know, substances that are not supposed to be within you, they show themselves, they reveal themselves, those dark spirits. So once the iboga cleaned it out, once it did that, then it was like, I was like reborn again. I was like, where the, so like the a new words. person, like, whoa, who, who is this guy? The next I was saying day. that to myself, I'm jumping up with like joy. Yeah. Like, I can't believe this. I'm going, I'm grabbing, picking up the shaman, like, thank you. So it's a spiritual exorcism. It's, the, if oh. the spirit is the 100, 110% main factor of it. And it's, well, I mean, it's the only yeah, medicine that really of works. Of course. It's is in, that level. So what are the four the, words? In the, <laughs> <laughs> in the body, like these spiritual parasitical energies reside in our tissues, you know, and Iboga not only taught us and showed us, but it was detoxing us on a very physical level. So four words the next day, I will never forget, that just made my heart sing. He said, I, I love, love my, life. my life. And that was yeah. something that was missing before that moment um, from the relapse. Yeah, from the relapse. Okay, you have these spiritual demons oh, yeah. attached mm -hmm. through aberrant behavior, through substances you've ingested, things that have kind of put dark marks. Dark mm -hmm. the nothing, I call them. Yeah. Into, into your consciousness. Yeah. And as you take the substance, you see yourself, you see the light, these things start to they clear. They do appear. They're no longer in you, or you have outshone well, actually, them. Like, I, I need actually, actually, what I what, had what's to happening? do, I had to, I had to, I had to defeat them myself. So, as you'll learn within the book, I became a superhero called Love Man. So I created this you Insi know, ins inside within the ceremony, myself, inside the context, in, mm -hmm. within myself, within my universe. Mm -hmm. I created a superhero, cape and everything. Heart, shape, head. friggin' symbol, everything. And was going through, because the main object objective during the fire talk was, you know, we had to do this for ourselves. And that was the intention. So as long as, as the intention is strong, then, you know, your power will flourish. So I created a superhero, Love Man. Went in, saw these dark forces, literally, like she said, she was talking about Star Wars and everything. Like, literally, I was in there with a lightsaber, you know, fighting Pack, these dark forces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did but, they have faces? Oh, they did. They were wow. just demonic. Wow. Like, it was just dark. Like, okay, so you're actually in, like, a Hadian hell realm this is, fighting this your is, demons. This is Especially real the first life. Journey, yeah. It was real life. Mm -hmm. Second journey was different. And so, mm -hmm. there was even points where, like, uh, like as you can see on the cover of the book, you know those hearts that are coming out of the third eye. Like I was literally having that coming out of my third eye and out of my heart area, being the superhero, destroying all these entities, these these dark forces. You know, and as it, and it was really dark in there, like darker than dark. And as I was cleaning cleaning house. Well, as I was cleaning the house, you started getting lighter and lighter and lighter to a warm, like loving color. And it just got, it got rid of it, not completely, but it got rid of most, a oh, 100% of it. I say 110% usually, but if something happens and I lose 10%, I still land on 100. So 100% of it was gone. How many hours? Uh, during doing the medicine, uh, we did it from seven at night till seven in the morning. So the whole thing yeah. lasts about four yeah, hours. Yeah, but it does like, last because <laughs> after that, you know, we're getting it's carried up visions. to the room, <laughs> and they say usually say after you sleep, you know, the medicine is taking its one hundred and ten percent effect. So, you know, we've we didn't sleep for like two days, and Wait, so we're still having visions. <laughs> and and what's but not like not like uh, as as intense as, intense as they were in the beginning because yeah, you're still on the train once you once yeah you're still on the train and they were they were clear uh, and the visions were even getting clearer and they were getting more like it was like more it was beautiful everything was just like more, was more loving. meaning yeah, layering it was around just like loving and it was just like 
to do anything in these visions. Yeah, so there was a, after the aftermath, <laughs> you know, the integration is a big part of it. So wh yeah. when I started researching the medicine, I, I learned it was also good for PTSD. And so that's why I decided to experience it for my own purposes. So it's not that the medicine turns you into a healthy robot for the rest of your no. life. It completely, de it has the potential with good facilitation and quality medicine to completely detox someone, heal them, teach them about the roots of the issues, and then we're in a neuroplastic state during ceremony. So you can literally heal with the visualizations and the very beautiful Bwiti facilitation and soul journeys that they have. And then afterward, the medicine gives you tools. Like the medicine gave me very specific tools for continuing to interact with my own mind. Now I felt the lift in the serotonin levels very strong for about six months. And I remember the moment when it left my body. Mm -hmm. And I was in dialogue with this plant spirit and it said, okay, I'm leaving, You're I'm heading out. Yeah. It, well, what it said was, huh. <laughs> now yeah. it's time to experience well, your own strength. Live life. Yeah. And oh, that's interesting. And so moving it's a, forward. it's a spirit ally that stayed with you for six months. Yeah, let's stay with you for six months. Yeah, oh, yeah. Six months, yeah. Mm -hmm. But then after that, it's like, yeah. okay, now you have to understand the strength of your own consciousness. And like Muginda says, um, we can't even be attached to the medicine. So it can be, I think, very helpful for people to have seasonal ceremonial experiences with entheogenic plant medicines. Maybe not everybody, but mm. I've, we're built with the receptor sites. We're hardwired for these plants, you know? Yeah. You know, but we, but yeah. without an attachment, like we can make it without the booster dose. You know, without continuing to take it in our lives, mm -hmm. we, we need to listen to when the medicine wants to take us too. It's not just us being consumers. Yeah, it'll help you get rooted and give you the navigational tools to work through life after after the yeah. fact. Yeah. Well, isn't that how you got into a mess in the first place? Is not having those and making bad decisions oh, in life, I remember right? What you like, said. I remember. I remember what you mm, said. What did I say? In re <laughs> in retrospect. Mm. He said, I stopped praying was when, was when the issues really started to spiral. When I down. stopped praying. Hmm. Yeah, that's what you told me after, in retrospect, after the medicine, you realized when uh, it started to get worse. Yeah, that was, that was a part of it. Yeah. Sure. And yeah. Overworking and everything. Well, there's spiritual hygiene yeah. that we forget about. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, then it, and then the days get dark. You get blinded. Right. Yeah, definitely. So what, what's the shaman doing in those first 12 hours from, from 7 uh -huh. p.m. to 7 a.m.? Is he like standing <laughs> over you? Like what is this? Like, show me what well, this room looks like. there's different phases. So they create a, a fire talk. So it's, it's, it's encased within three walls. So they have to, they have to do the ceremony it's within the three walls. The well, temple has to be within three so walls. So it's a triangular temple? No, it's <coughs> a square. It's a square well, with like an open... With, out with, a, with an open door. So you can... You have, so they create I see. You, 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 can, you can leave... You can come in when you come in, and you can leave at any time. So okay. that's why there's only three walls. And so, is it a hut? Like you got a thatched roof? Uh, it? it's a temple. And we started. It's a temple. First you know. With the fire yeah, we start with the fire talk and everything. And there's a lot of navigational tools that come through the initial fire he's, ceremony. He's basically like a psychic during the fire talk. Like he can read you through the si uh, through the fire talk, and he's like. He's throwing out stuff that is aimed towards who you are. And he's like, he's counseling you. Yeah. Does he you know your story before you show up? Mm -hmm. Kind of. No, 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 really. Nah, he, kind it, of. he doesn't, he hasn't he heard what yeah, you he, know he knows about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but he's, sure. he's shooting out he stuff know. that I'm like, wow, how, how would he know something like that? Yeah. And I think he, he just knows how to read people well. And he's a mm -hmm. shaman, mm -hmm. you know, he can go in and out and in and out and know who you are. Yeah, mm -hmm. from that's within. Remarkable. Yeah. yeah, so you know, fire talk, and that's for at least like an hour long. And then from there, he administers the medicine. And then... What's the, is it oral? Yeah, they have, a, they have like an extraction of it. That, yeah, natural total alkaloid yeah, extract of the yeah. medicine. And, and they do have root bark. Root bark too. It so can also be taken... Test you with the root bark. 
then they'll give you some extra. And, and that, that'll be later. Some people can just take like half a, half a teaspoon of, of root bark and they're, psh, they're gone. Gone what? Eyes roll I'm, back like, no, like a sleep? No, 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 yeah, no, like no, what no. You're still mean? functional. You're so still you're, functional. you're in the room. Yeah. So when you're in those first 12 hours, because like, uh, you know, like I've been in IS ceremonies, I've been like, I've, yeah. I've seen stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. what do people look like in an Iboga ceremony? Like are your eyes open? Are you communicating? Uh, are no, you, actually, no, we're laying functional. down. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's, okay. there's, there's a bed where we lay and a, they give us a blindfold, which allows us to go deeper into the visions. It's dark. And they allow really the dark. medicine to start to work and then the shaman... Um, and he was working with an amazing apprentice, yeah. um, Michael Dancing Eagle Cassidy was there with him. Mm -hmm. And they start to do a guided journey at a point when we're really filled with medicine. So just a, a part of the night is this guided journey of meeting our higher self or our soul. But you're laying and down this whole time. Yeah. That's yeah, it. and except when we have to With go the to the bathroom and we yeah. have help and you know, carry to the bathroom and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, they, they helped us yeah. get to the bathroom. The whole evening was sentient. Like there was yeah. no question about what is the material world and what is the visionary world. It, it, I felt very present. present in the room. But along with yeah. the practice, they're like hawks. They're like watching you the whole time. Yeah. You know, they're doing their thing on their computers or whatever, but they're like I love the watching. computers or whatever <laughs> part. <laughs> oh, they're no, fine. Not Facebook. No. <laughs> yeah, but no, they're, they're, they're watching you. They are watching you like a hawk, definitely, yeah, they, for all sure. All night, yeah. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a long night. Oh, we'll get a couple it questions from the audience. Okay. Let, me, let me just tag yeah. them in because we're running low sure. on time. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so um, first question is, does this type of ceremony um, work with multiple types of addiction, so not just drug addiction or anything like that? Food addiction, all types of stuff, yeah. Did, you, um, did they catch that? I think with... Did they hear that? Oh, yeah, he's going to mind. Okay. Addictive yeah. personalities... I believe or I know that it will have an effect on it. Yes, it, it can. Will. It has the potential. If you if, if that's if that's what you bring to the table. So if mm -hmm. you if, if you're like I eat too much or I'm addicted to porn, you know, and that's what you want to heal, um, and you ask Iboga this, and that's your intention. You lay it on the altar. You lay it on the altar. You ask the right question. You've got to yeah. ask the right questions. Mm. And a strong intention. Yeah. Like a really strong intention. And again, with good facilitation and quality mm -hmm. medicine. It's one thing I, I really want to say is that, sure, you can find Iboga on the web, but I, we would never, no. ever advise for Don't anyone do to do that <laughs> for a few different reasons. You know, Iboga has to be a mature plant to treat anyone. It has to be quality medicine, even better if it's grown in ceremony and and harvested in ceremony, but then you find things on the web, um, medicine associated with elephant poachers, because elephants eat iboga, mm. and we don't want to support that. And mm -hmm. also, Dr. Deborah Mash in um, Florida, based out of Florida, she's a professor there, amazing researcher for ibogaine, the active alkaloid in the medicine, is that she's found a lot of medicine acquired online to be adulterated, straight up poisonous, fake, you know, causing yeah. cardiotoxic <laughs> effects. Like, please, you know, and plus, even if someone were to get good quality medicine. You need a shaman. This is a, an exactly. extremely powerful jet fuel, and I cannot imagine going through it without the kind of facilitation, the skillful facilitation that, that we have. It has to be in the right container. And just, just to be clear, folks, if you're in the United States, it's illegal. So it you is, need to go sadly. to Africa or go somewhere where it is legal if yeah. you're interested in <clears throat> such things yep. because it is legal in the United States. Yeah, another question. Okay. Um, so Janet asked, do you think the pretense of it being a healing process and a healing experience had an effect on your experience? Um, so if someone did this without expectation, what would happen or do you think their experience would differ from yours? I think intention is vital. Even, intention is even in people's initiations, key. intention is yeah. is really you key. You have to go there with an intention. Yeah. You, know, I've done a toad ceremony. Mm -hmm. No matter what the hell they told me, yeah. three seconds into it, you're gone for 15 minutes to another planet. Oh uh, yeah. So but it holds you, know, you. <laughs> I, I don't know what intention would have done. But yeah, but what I'm saying is like, <laughs> trust me, it, it's it's taking you somewhere, right? Yeah. That's true, and that's yeah. a medicine I've I've been blessed to experience. And yet, I feel like the intention is somehow something whispered to God or spirit. 
sure. that carries you through as a guiding light, even if you're in the death process, mm -hmm. and that holds you in the integration. Yeah. And I, I also wanted to offer on my website, uh, ebast.net, I have a page dedicated to Iboga that has safety tips and a provider listing and all kinds of amazing resources oh, yeah. and a documentary, great videos, research, medical, right. uh, medical research there. Cool. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you for doing that work. That's yeah. 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 And, and I, just, I just want to be clear about one more thing here. Listen, we're talking about spirit medicine. We're not talking about, you know, Saturday night kind of party. You know, one of the biggest issues I have with people that are like, oh, I'll never do mushrooms again. I, you know, I took too many and went to Disneyland once. It's like, <laughs> don't be a dumb fuck. Like, th th this class of drugs is for something else, exactly. right? Oh, yes. It is for healing on the spirit level. Exactly. So you have to go in with intention. Mm -hmm. You have to go in understanding that you're there to do some work. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I oh, made yeah. that mistake yeah. once. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> When I was 18 years old, I took a massive dose of mushrooms, not knowing what I was doing, as a recreational party drug, and it kicked my ass. And mm. I will tell you that, that that was the medicine journey for me, because that medicine schooled me, it spanked me, I thought I was going to die, and it showed me that this was something that wanted to be held in ceremony, and at least with very, very strong intentions, mm -hmm. and definitely with iboga. He had a friend who mail ordered iboga, and uh, this is one reason why he yeah. was terrified initially to try it. That we I write about in there, that took it on his own, no tribe. You know, the medicine loves community. It 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 loves um, a teacher. It it's loves a accountability. Medicine. It's a tribal relationship-based mm -hmm. medicine. Mm -hmm. So he took it on his own. Um, God knows, you know, doesn't doesn't really know how to dose himself because it's an organic dosing process with a total alkaloid medicine and gets himself off of drugs. And then, as he's not having any skill set to hold that experience, he starts thinking later on, hmm, I'm going to appropriate this. I'm going to party. Yeah. I'm going to party. And then when it's inconvenient, when I get addicted, I'll use the medicine again. And he went through several yeah. experiences. And the medicine kicked his ass harder and harder and harder until he was left with some health problems, who knows from what he ordered online, and, and also still, and screaming for his life with in an emergency room, yeah. where, yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's not. But how he's we hold like the terrified of doing it again. We should be. Well, yeah, that's <laughs> not that's not how the medicine is going to help us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a yeah. whole series of of things that help the medicine to work, including community relationship the ceremony and integration you know the medicine gives us revelations but then maybe we need to build a new skill set to make mm -hmm. that happen well i mean if you've gotten yourself to a point in life where you have serious problems you're addicted to heroin then chances are some of the the, the habits that you form some of the behavior that you formed isn't serving you and mm -hmm. thinking <laughs> right yeah. and you're self-medicating in a way that's very yeah yeah so yeah. i mean it's time for you know a, a computer system reboot and mm. probably an operating system upgrade that's a great analogy right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean it's just faulty faulty memes that are just running and so faulty <laughs> memes. <laughs> right and that, we all have them Jesus. Well, yeah. and sometimes they're deep rooted oh, yeah. from childhood yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we don't even know they're running on the background that they're semi-conscious, not even fully conscious. That's it. And so this is serious stuff. It is very strong stuff. I was first turned on to it um, when I started looking. I was doing a fair amount of detox um, work as an acupuncturist mm -hmm. in my early days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd have all these heroin addicts come in and, and, and you know, put needles in their ears. And you're like, yeah, I feel better. I'm like, this shit ain't working. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. this is this is a Band-Aid. Yeah. yeah. And so I started looking at what would actually be, you know, and it has to be that, like, spirit alter level mm -hmm. right because it's a it's it's a spirit level pathology like yes. you are, you are exactly. at that level where you have to go to the highest source and then shift oh, yeah. and then guess what you walk out of there yeah. and you're done with the drug of course right hours. yeah yeah craving was gone and and the, i love my life you know zero mm. not the, at all didn't want to put anything bad in my body ever again all, all, Still no. all good cool. things yeah. and all healing starts yeah. with deep and true self-love and self-respect. That was what four years ago, I think. Yeah. All good healing starts with deep and true self-love and self-respect. That's one for you. <laughs> yeah. The, bo the, the with book that. is called Heart Medicine: A True Love Story. Elizabeth Bast and her, her uh, longtime lover, uh, spray paint artist, Shore Boogie. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find his art at shoreboogie.com. Yeah. And you're down here for. I am having an art show in La Jolla 
uh, Monarch Gallery, Monarch Aerodon Contemporary Gallery, and um, I've just been out here working on like 21 pieces. <clears throat> Opens April 29th. 29th. Yeah. yeah. So if you're seeing this live, go there. If you're yeah. seeing it after, look up his stuff. Please do. Yeah, yeah. and we're also um, speaking, I'm speaking at a Symposia Psychedelic Stories event in Los Angeles. Um, tomorrow night is the 26th. Symposia.com, that's P-S-Y-M-P-O-S-I-A.com. And then another one on the 27th in San Diego, uh, also found on Symposia.com. And amazing activism around that medicine and all medicines. Great. Well, yeah. all I know is what we have now doesn't work great. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what yeah. we have the potential of bringing over is amazing in the right hands. In the oh, right yeah. hands. We in have a right lot hands. to learn right from yeah. and I don't, And I don't like the medical industry taking any of this stuff over. They, they, they yeah. compartmentalize. You know, it's, it's that whole thing, right? When you take alkaloids versus, you know, uh, extracts versus the whole plant and all mm -hmm. this. It's like, you know, the original kind of story of Adam and Eve when they fell they didn't just see the garden, there was the rock, there was this, there. it's like you start seeing things separately instead of just the beauty of the garden, right? And yeah. so plant yeah. medicine is about the plant, exactly. right? Yeah. And so this extractionary mentality is very, you know, it's not distillation. It's well, not, you can patent, well, you can patent. Ex extractions. Yeah. And I will say that there's a lot to be gained from a melding and a cross-pollination of the medical professionals and uh, the shamanic communities to share knowledge, you know? like. Sure. The medical professionals have a lot to share about the medical conditions and pharmaceutical drugs that Westerners are on that some traditional providers might not know all about. So it's a really exciting time. And there's some great people in the medical field that mean well, that have skill and talent, intelligence and love. And so I'd, I'd love to see more cross-pollination between those sure. worlds. There are people, it's just, it's a worldview. So if you're in a reductionist worldview and yeah. you think that it's your way or the highway, mm. then you're just, you're never gonna get it. Yeah. And you're just one of those types of doctors. And then mm. there's these open-minded doctors that are like, wow, this is amazing. And the evidence is incredible and it doesn't <laughs> fit my belief system or my, my worldview, but mm. I can't deny the fact that this evidence is incredible. And that's a real scientist. Oh, we met exactly. so many amazing doctors and, and psychiatrists yeah. at the Psychedelic Science Conference that was put on by MAPS. And they're probably, mm -hmm. you know, some of them are hiding and not handing out their business cards because mm. they can't, because it's, it's challenging. There's more and more coming out, that's true. And, and they have a medical education that is subsidized by pharmaceutical drug companies. So it, it's, a, it's a delicate situation, but there's more coming out because uh, it's so clear that these medicines have a lot to offer. Yeah, well, this is just the beginning. Uh, any awareness we can help to spread on this, I've heard amazing stories. I've also heard, you know, people getting into trouble. People, yeah, you know, you can, you can be a reckless cowboy, you're going to get your ass kicked. Right. Yep. People get in trouble, but if you go in it with an open heart and you work with the right people and all the circumstances are there, it's very interesting. Yeah. All right, we're out of time. Check out their websites. Uh, this to me is fascinating stuff. If you have someone who has an addiction problem in your life, don't just take what you're told for an answer, start doing some research, mm. look up the resources, go find your own love story with yourself and yes. then with the people in your life. Oh, awesome. Exactly. Thank well you so said. much for being here. Thank Blessing. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll see you next time.